do the main limit thing. You're already kind of doing it. But the first thing I want to talk about, I want to back up in terms of algebra, is the distributive property. Because that's a misnomer. You really shouldn't say distributive property. Because not everything distributes. Now, do you remember the commutative property? You know, A plus B is equal to B plus A, right? What if I have 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 3? Are those the same thing? 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 3, is that the same? No. Not the same. So subtraction, <laughs> hey guys, pay attention, because this is what gets you in trouble with exponents, is not commutative. Well, the problem is when we distribute, we think everything distributes. That's not true. If I have 2 times 3 plus 4, it's the distributive property of multiplication over addition. We're going to have distributive property in limits. So it's going to be a little bit different. What you have to realize, though, is that this property does not apply every single time. It only applies, in this case, multiplication over addition. So you're going to do 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Some of you are saying, oh, I know that. That's true. I hope. Are those equal? Yes? No? Are those equal? That's a good some answer. If you can't see, there's a couple spots up front. 2 times 7, because I'm writing big. And 6 plus 8. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Okay. Some of you want to do this. Can you distribute multiplication over multiplication? No. This is associative property. This is the same as 2 times 3 times 4. Arithmetic is a binary operation. It can do two things like this. So I can't go 2 times 3 times 4 all in my head. You may think you're doing that, but you're not. It's 2 times 12, which is 24, or else you're doing this, 6 times 4, 24. You might write the answer down without showing it. That's fine. Okay, in the back. you got to get a seat in chair today, too. And you guys should have your name tags out so I can know who you are. Well, when we do exponents, we have the same problem. And a lot of you want to distribute exponents over addition. You can't do that. Is this the same as 2 squared plus 3 squared? This is a common mistake. No matter what this guy's name is, not paying attention. Can you do that? Is it true? You do it all the time. It's not true. This is 5 squared. This is 2, uh, or 4 2 squared. 2 squared is 4 plus 9. Is that equal? No. But if I have 2 times 3 squared, is that equal to 2 squared times 3 squared? So if you don't know if something distributes, put in numbers. Well, that's not going to work with limits, but this is 6 squared. This is equal to 4 times 9. Are those the same? Yeah. So the problem is, when you were taught distributive property, you didn't get the whole thing. You didn't get of multiplication over addition. Of exponents over multiplication, but not exponents over addition. Still, many of you are going to try to distribute exponents over addition. Can't do it. Distributive property does not work in every single operation. That's interesting. And that's, that's what mathematics is. When you go into college, you study math, you start studying those properties and when you can do things, when you can't do things, and then they can invent some new crazy weird things. Okay, so we're going to do limits. When do limits distribute? They do, which is really nice. And you've been doing it all along. You are not going to memorize this theorem. You're just going to do it. I'm not even going to go through the little steps where you do it, but you're automatically going to do it. And it says if the limit of f is l, as x approaches c, and the limit of g is m, if I take the limit of a sum, it's just the sum of the limits. In other words, you can find the limit of f 
I'm going to shorthand the notation of this, plus the limit of G. Well, you've already been doing that. <laughs> when you do, I'll do a really simple example. As X approaches 2 of X plus 4, when you substitute the 2 in, what you're really doing is taking the limit as X approaches 2 of X plus the limit as X approaches 2, sorry, it's on the side there, of 4. Well, this is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. It's the same as the substituted. So guess what? Limits do distribute over sums, contraction. They even distribute over multiplication. The reason why I did the distributive property, because uh, a multiplication does not distribute over multiplication, but limits do. We're going to do derivatives, and guess what? They don't, unfortunately. Now, here's one of the biggest ones right here. I don't like this part over there. The limit of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the limit of the function. Now, a limit is called an operator. Addition is an operator. A square root and a squaring, those are operators. This is another one that you've never seen before. No, that's an exponent, I'm thinking. But it's, it's, it's like, and we'll do it in derivatives, too. And this is really going to be important that I can pull that constant out. You won't. You'll just do it. So if I take, let me give you a simple example. If I take the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x, guess what? I can pull the 3 out there and take the limit as x approaches 2 of x. Well, that's 3 times 2, which is 6. But you're not going to do that. You're just going to substitute 2 in there, and that's all there's going to be to it. So it's going to be easy. But later on, you're going to see some weird things, and you're going to want to be able to pull the constants out. Guess what? Limits distribute over division. This is also equal to the limit of f over the limit of g. Now, when you get into some homework problems, you might have to apply the properties so they don't tell you what the limits are. Here's the power rule. So if I have, let's put you put in terms of something easier. Let's do the limit of x cubed as x approaches 2. You can rewrite that as the limit of x as x approaches 2 cubed. What's the limit of, of x as x approaches 2? It's 2. So it's 2 cubed, which is 8. Could you have just substituted in? Yes. That's the final rule that you can substitute in. Is that okay? You're not going to ever explicitly write down these properties. There's one condition on the properties. We're not going to worry about it so much this year. These rules only hold provided that the limits exist. Next year in BC Calculus, we're going to see what happens if the individual limits don't exist. The rules don't apply, but can you still find the limit? As you can, sometimes, not always. Okay, that is a polynomial. It says, can you, write, you guys read it on your handout at least? A sub n, x to the n. These n's, n's are not even integers, they are whole numbers. Okay, so this is a polynomial. And what's nice about polynomials I gotta write that. I knew it. I had that on my list last night. Didn't get there. You're on the back side of the blue. Are we on blue sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah. We did the pink one already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's online. I save it as a PDF. So you can go and look at them. The blue one. Should be the theorem two, the back side. Am I correct? Okay. Don't confuse me. I get confused easily. <laughs> That's true, but you have to do, we're still in section 2.1. We're taking our time, because this is the whole foundation of calculus. So you need to know what a polynomial is. And what po what's nice about polynomials, they're smooth. This is an x to the fourth. x to the third looks like this. Remember those? There's no breaks. Limits from the left equal limits from the right, always, on a polynomial. It's nice. And 
This is called, when you have a fraction, it's called a rational function. You've seen these, you just haven't learned the name. And there's a word in here, inside of rational, it's ratio. And what is really a ratio? Oh, remind me to slide this. What's a ratio? It's a fraction. And you all remember that? You see the word ratio and fraction? Yes, you do. Ratio right here. I don't know if it's by luck, but it's there. You have to look up fraction. I'd have to Google it and see. Okay. And they don't even have the big theorem, which is the substitution theorem. You always substitute. So you aren't going to go through all those details of breaking it down to the little parts. You're never going to do that. You'll worry about it being too tough. You'll have to worry about it there, but we'll worry about that next year. Okay. So the next part of the, what's left in this chapter are the, well, first I'm going to write here, are the trig functions. And now we're going to use that main limit theorem a little bit. What happens when I substitute in zero here? I get what? What's the tangent? Oh, okay. We forgot tangent of zero, didn't we? <laughs> I get the tangent of zero, but I'm going to show you how you remember it. Because you have to know what the tangent function looks like. That looks like this. Where are those asymptotes? Remember where the asymptotes are? Pi, these are basic things you have to know. And minus pi over two. Okay. So what's the tangent of zero? Zero over zero. So now I'm going to use an identity to change the tangent function. Now this is what's new for you in terms of what we're going to do here. It's the limit as x goes to 0, and the tangent is the sine of x over the cosine of x. And that's all over x. Now, the main limit theorem says that I can find the limit of each piece separately. I've got a little problem here. When I put 0 in, I get 0 over the cosine of 0 over 0. I'll draw the cosine function. What's the cosine of zero? What's the cosine of zero? One. Ones don't give me any trouble. Which numbers give me trouble? Zeros. Only the zeros. So it's okay. Now, I know some of the other people teach it a little differently. They do all sorts of flipping and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. Evaluate out everything that's not zero because there's not a trouble there at all. So this is not zero, this is one. Well, I still get what? Zero over zero, but if I evaluate this, what am I left with? If this is one, what am I still left with? That goes away, I'm left with what? Sine of x over x. Remember, this is one you have to know. What is that? That's one. You can't see in the back, there are seats in the front. No reason to be back there. X approaches zero? Yeah, that's X approaches zero. It's a little sloppy zero. And now, like I said, I, I like math because it tells me what to do. Are we ready for the next one? You always substitute it in. Let me rewrite it so it's a little bit bigger, but you have it on your sheet, right? One. What about this one? What if I substitute in zero? What do I get? I get zero plus, I'm assuming you know the sine of zero, but maybe that's a bad assumption. What's the sine of zero? <coughs> What's the sine of zero? It's zero. Okay, so that's zero over zero. But I know my math, so I know what to do can't think of anything else to do. I don't know. have any identities for the sine of x. I'm stuck with that. But there's a division by there. Can I divide that? Yeah. So it's x over x plus the sine of x. 
over x. We must divide x into both of them, not just one. It's distributive property. Okay? So be doing it with me. Maybe try to tempt us to be working. <laughs> I'm, I'm smart on it. Simplify that. What's x over x? Now remember, we're not at zero. You remember that, right? We'll do some Schoology quizzes. I might ask you that. What's the limit? Do we care what happens at zero? Do you care what happens at zero? Nope. So can I cancel these? Because we're not there. If we're at zero, I can't cancel. You're right. So it's the limit as x approaches zero. As long as we're not at zero, this is okay. This is 1 plus the sine of x over x. Now, I would just write the answer down. But this is new for you. So we're going to go ahead and distribute the limit because we can of 1 plus the limit of the sine of x over x. What's this limit? That's 1. What's this other limit? Oops, I forgot x approaches 0. It makes a difference. If x goes to infinity, it's a different matter. So what's the answer? It's not algebraic. It's trigonometric. We're going to go back to the pink one. That's one. You have to memorize it. Two. Yeah. So now we're going to go back to your pink one. <laughs> I guess i got to find it. Oh, I might. Oh, I guess that's a clean one. Let's see what I can find this way. Okay, this is period two. Let's see, what's the one? No, I don't want that. So there it is. I don't know why you don't have one, but I think yours is in the other room. <laughs> other, yours is in the other folder. <laughs> so this is the pink worksheet. We're going to do some easier ones and come back to this one. Same question as our homework. I think I'm answering the questions on the last three problems in the homework if you tried it. So this is pink. Okay, we skipped this part. And if you remember, I said it's nice to be able to pull constants out. I guess the first thing is to realize what this is saying. This is really this limit. This is a pink worksheet. This is one-third times the sine of x over x. The pink one is the very last page, I think. Maybe second last page. If you have a over b times c over d, that is the same as a times c over b times d. So I'm going to pause and give you a chance so that you believe what I just did. 3x gives me this 3x, and 1 times the sine of x is this. It's just easier to see. You don't have to write it that way. Is there a constant there that I can pull out? Is 1 third changing? No. This is a constant. Remember that property that you can pull the constants right out in front. So that that's equal to one-third times the limit as x goes to zero of sine of x over x. What's this limit? One. So the answer is one-third. It's just tricks. Knowing the rules and tricks. You play football, you better know the rules. Play basketball, you better know the rules. Golf is very complicated. <laughs> I'm on the rules committee for the MWGA. It's complicated, but I have to know the rules. And I have to know the definitions. In fact, that our, uh, Mr. Holmeyer says, if you know the definitions, the rules are easy. And he's right. Okay. Now, some of you want to pull the 3 right out of the sine of 3x. Guess what? Can you do that? Is the sine of 3x, you'll get the right answer, but I'm going to write it, mark it wrong. 
is that equal to three times the sine of x? Now, how tall does this get? One. What does the three do? Three. Just switch it to three, right? How tall is this one? Three. So guess what? You can't do that. So we're going to do a little trick. The rule is the limit, I'm going to change variables, they're dummy variables, and I don't care what you call them, call it h. If I have the sine of h over h, as h goes to 0, that's equal to 1. Here's the deal. All these letters here must match. Now, I can do a substitution. I'd rather do it intuitively, but that's up to you. I want these to match, and guess what? They don't. But I can fix that. <laughs> I like fixing things. Well, provided I know how to do it. If these would match if I had a what number here? Three. Now, if I put a three in the denominator, I must also put a three where? Yep. Can I go ahead and pull it out? Are you okay with that? I'd rather pull it out. Now, if x goes to zero, does three x go to zero? X is getting to be zero. If 3 times 0, is that going to 0 also? No. So guess what this is? It's 1. Do you want me to do a substitution? I can say let h equal 3x. Then I've got 3 times the limit. I'll deal with this in a moment. And it's the sine of h over h. Now if h is equal to 3x and x goes to 0 right here, what's h doing? going to zero. That's a lot of work. <laughs> if I can just see these have to match, I'm okay with that. That's just fun. So this is just three times one. This is three. Just a trick. Think of that as just a trick, a math trick. So we're going to have to do a math trick on the next two. Then we're going to come back to the blue one and do those, so they're a little bit harder. Yeah. These have to match. This does not match right now. I'll move it. It does have to change too. But if x goes to zero up here, doesn't h also go to zero? Yeah. Now, had it been three divided by x, no, that wouldn't be true. It'd be a different sum. You, you can do that if that's what happens. Okay. Well, this is really, this, ready for the next one? This is really this. It's the limit, and some of you see it right away, some of you don't. But this is the sine of 2x, and this is 3 times x. That's really a one-third. Now check, do you believe that that's right? Do you agree? Yes, no? If I multiply 1 times the sine of 2x, I get the sine of 2x. If I multiply 3 times x, I get 3x. What can I pull out of this? What number can I pull out of here? One third. You can pull a constant right out. That's the rule. You just have to know the rule. That's all. You don't have to know why. Uh, I don't even know what cooking is, but <laughs> I can call it, but I don't know what it is. But you know, yeah, it don't, doesn't matter why. It is what it is. It's the rule. So I'm going to pull that one out. And so I'm going to have one third times the limit as x goes to 0 of the sine of 2x over x. There's two ways to do this problem. That's probably the easy way. You put a 2 here, where else must I put a 2 to keep this equal? Out in front. 1 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator. What's this limit going to be? If, if x goes to 0, doesn't 2x go to 0? Yeah, what is that equal to? One. So this is two thirds. I'm going to show you the other way. You two aren't going to like, but <laughs> okay. I have a one third. I have the limit as x goes to zero because it's not always one way to do problems. A sine of two x over x. Does anybody remember the one identity? One of the three I told you you had to know. is one-third, the limit as x goes to zero 
And a side of two S, does anybody know what it is? Okay, this should be in the list of things you have to know. Sine of two S is equal to two sine of X, that's wrong, because that's twice as big as that. But if you multiply it by the cosine, then it works out. And I'm not proving it to you today. Probably could, but I'm not. So it's two times, well, two times the sine of X times the cosine of X all over X. What can you do with the two? Can you pull it out? You guys get that? Can I pull it out? Sure you can. So I'm going to pull it out. You can't miss it. <laughs> and then I'm left with this limit. That's all I can think of. One, uh, sorry, two-thirds. And it's the limit as X goes to zero. And it's the sine of X times the cosine of X. And for convenience sake, I'm going to put the X under the sine because I know that limit. And that's the one. Do you believe those are the same thing? Question. Raise your hand this one first, and I'll come back to it, okay? What's this limit? Now, I could write this as the limit of this times the limit of the cosine, but I don't know about you. I'm just, I'm too lazy to do it. What's this limit? That's what? One. What's the cosine of zero? One. It's like it's an identity. Now, to go back to your question about up here, the sine of 2x, I had 2x over x, so I put in a 2. But I multiplied the numerator by 2. So that's equal to what number? You can't pull this 2 out. No, because the sine of 2x does not equal 2 sine of x. You can't pull this 2 out. The only way to pull that 2 out is to do it the way I did it. You have to have it what it's equal to. You'll get the right answer. But I'm going to mark it wrong because it's wrong. It's not just the 2 sine x. It's 2 sine x cosine x. So if I have the sine of 3x, I can't just pull that 3 out. This does not equal this. These things have to be equal. Sure, but I don't like to do that. It's work. <laughs> you, you can. I mean, you could do something like that. This gets left. I put the two here, put the two here, my answer's two thirds. Two sets. Let's do well I got more. Let's do more. How about the tangent of x over the sine of x? Did we do that one? No, we don't want to like it, but not quite. Let's change the blue. What's this? What should I do? What do I get zero over zero by the way? Yeah. What should I do to the tangent? Sorry. Sine of x over the cosine of x, over the sine of x. Complicated fraction. I know how to simplify it. I'm not convinced you guys do. <laughs> you guys ready? Let's go ahead and evaluate the cosine. Because it's not zero. If it were zero, I'd be in trouble. But it's not. That's one. So this ends up being, now I could just write the answer down. I'm showing my steps for you. This ends up being the limit as x goes to 0, sine of x over sine of x, which is? It's 0 over 0, but I don't care what happens at 0. If I'm not at 0, what happens to sine of x over sine of x? Remember, we're not at 0. These values are always going to be the same. What's that ratio equal to? Don't make it hard. It's 1. <laughs> okay, that finishes the pink sheet. We're going to go back now and do some harder problems that are on the blue sheet. Pink and blue for everybody in here. Yeah. You're right. I get zero over zero. At zero, this is undefined. There's a hole there. Because I remember, are we at zero? We're never at zero. We're close. Is this zero then if we're not at zero? Yes. All of these have holes there. Okay, guys, a limit is what the y value is getting close to. At zero, there is no y value. At zero, there is no y value. That's not what I'm asking. I'm saying, what is it approaching? Getting close to one, you could graph that on your graph and calculator, and you'll see that that's always one, a horizontal line, with a hole at zero. Want me to do that? 
I can show you the hole if I, if I zoom it just enough. So I haven't tried that. There's a hole there. Anytime you get zero over zero, it's a hole. I don't know what happens in zero. Remember, those are indeterminate. A limit is what it's close to. I can get close to my goal halfway, but I'm never going to get it close. What's the limiting value? That it's close. Say that again. Where'd you get that? Once you get these, they're not bad. You'll get them. It might take a little bit of time. Oh, wait, I don't want that. I want this. Okay. Um, that one. Why does it say two? Oh, it's out of the old book. Ooh, now these, these kind of look hard. Can I, make, I can't make them bigger. Okay, so I'll rewrite it. It's the limit, and the first thing I do is I get rid of the constants. Get the constants out. These are not constants, this 4x. This is part of the angle. 3 is just a plain old number. So I'm going to pull the 3 and put it out in front. Now, I'm also going to write this a little differently. I don't have to write it a little differently. You might not either, but I'm going to write it this way. Sine of 4x over 1 times 1 over the sine of 3x. And we're going to play this little game, the trick. Question? Do I get 0 over 0 if I substitute in 0? What's the sine of 0? Yeah, I get 0 over 0. Okay. Anybody got an idea? What you would have to have here to make this limit become 1? 4x. It's a trick. So once you understand it's a trick, it's just a trick. I'm just changing the name of this a little bit. I'm going to make this 4x. Well, if I do that, I must make also this numerator 4x, correct? That's 4x. Now, what's this equal to? 1. So let me clean it up. Where's my regular sign? I don't know. <laughs> so this is 3 times the limit as x goes to 0. And let's see, that's 1. And I have a 4x over sine of 3x. Can I pull any numbers out? This is equal to this, 3 times the limit of 4 times x over the sine of 3x. How about if I put parentheses there? Maybe that makes it a little easier. Are there any constants? This is not a constant. This is 3 times the angle. But is there just a plain old number here? Sure, 4. Let's pull that out. So that's going to give me 12. I'm going to slide this up times the limit as x goes to 0 of x over the sine of 3x. What do you think has to be in front of that x? Just use your intuition here now. See, even though it's the reciprocal, we're okay. And many times, well, no. I have to put a 3 here. Where else do I have to put a 3? Okay, it's a trick you got to pay attention to. This is 1, so where does a 3? There it's out here. So it's 12, not times 3, but divided by 3, or 4. The only way you get better at these is practice, practice, practice. You may have to go back and redo these. They aren't equal. Sine of 4x over sine of 3x are not the same. <coughs> you can't pull the 4 and 3 out. That's what you guys want to do. You want to pull the 4 and the 3 out. You can't do it. It's not correct. And I'll mark it wrong. I don't know what the sine of 3x is. I'm sure there's some sort of identity. I could probably figure it out, but I don't really want to do it. <laughs> Too much work. Yes. Right, because it's the reciprocal of this. The sine of 3x over 3x, and that limit is just 1. Yeah. I can even see. I can barely see this one. <laughs> Let me write it up. Now, this could be really hard or it can be pretty easy. So let's do it the easy way. 
Now, some of the people, because I know the other teachers teach it a little differently than I do, they simplify that whole fraction there. I'm not going to do that. Too much work. I'm going to evaluate everything that's not zero, and then things will fall into that very nicely. By the way, what is that learning? It's what? Tangent of zero over what? Over zero, because that's zero, that's just a number. Let me rewrite it this way, and let's use the main limit thing. This is what I said. Sometimes you will use it. This is the tangent of 3x over x times the limit. Remember, I can distribute this. 1 over the secant of 2x. Are you okay with that? I don't have to do anything fancy here. As x goes to 0. Can we find this limit? Yeah, do you guys remember what it is, secant? It's 1 over what? Cosine. I'm going to show all my work. You don't have to. There are some things you have to show. And this is the limit as a 1 over the cosine of 2x as x goes to 0. What's the cosine of 2 times 0? It's the cosine of 0, right? Remember what that is? I haven't done the other one yet. Just deal with one. So wait. Oh, I forgot the one over. Sorry. Good. What's the cosine of zero? One. What's the secant of zero? One. The two is is the two times zero. Can't pull that out because it's not true. It's the one over the cosine of zero. That's just one. So guess what this limit is? It's just one. What about this one? This is the limit. Now, what's the tangent of 3x? I want to write it in sine and cosine. The sine of 3x, you have to know its identity, over the cosine of 3x over x. Let's go ahead and evaluate what I can, because I can evaluate the cosine of 3x. Because what's that? Put in zero. It's the cosine of 3 times 0, which is the cosine of 0. If it were 0, I'd be in trouble, but it isn't. It's what? 1. So guess what? That's just 1. If it was 2, I would take the 2 and put it out in front and worry about the, the fraction later. This is the same as this. So you're going to have to show work on this. Some of you may look at it and say, okay, I know the answer is 3. I can do it, but I don't believe you guys can. What do you have to do with this one? What does this have to do to make this work? That group's not true. Apparently the group's wrong. Oh, no, and then I put a 3 here. And then what do we do with the 3? Pull it out in front. So it's 3 times this limit as x goes to 0, because certainly 3x goes to 0, over 3x. And that's what? I can't think of one off the top of my head. If I got my old book out, I could give you a nice one where you're pulling the numbers out in front. It doesn't work. I'll bring that in for the morning. I remember to do it. <laughs> it's in my old book. It's a nice little problem. So that maybe leads us into some of the questions on last night's assignment. It's a trick. It's the sign of star over star as the limit of star goes to zero. I'm right at the second part of my board, unfortunately. Amazing, I'm not talking to Zelda Bell. <laughs> Your assignment is on the assignment sheet. I don't believe that's changed. The assignment, now you're going to have to use your assignment sheet with Schoology. We have a calendar up there, but we don't write the problem numbers down. The assignment sheet is on Schoology. So if you lost your assignment sheet, you can go and look on Schoology and see what it is. Also, and I haven't done it yet, but I used to post it up there. So we are going to look at section 2.1, and your assignment is to continue with whatever is on the assignment sheet. I don't know. I'll go get my assignment sheet. We are going to have a quiz probably on Friday.
which would be on this worksheet. By the way, where is my little folder? It didn't get very far. Put your folder in here. Put your your sheet in there. Um, I don't know. I got to look it up. Okay. We are on day three. Mrs. Herzman assigned some of the problems and is gone. Some of the problems. Um, earlier than that. And so you may have some questions on some of those. I think it was one through 18. Did you do 18 okay? Did you do 18? I don't know if she signed it. I don't remember. Okay. You should be able to a problem like 18 because you're going to have one on the quiz. And then she assigned it. Oh, she only signed the odds. Maybe tomorrow we'll review and we'll do some of the other ones. Now, I did 26. I did 28. How about 27 and 25? What about those? Yeah. This is the book. You had a book assignment last night. We are on. We had to add some days because you were struggling. So your assignment for tomorrow is day three. Okay. I might. I'm collecting it. It's getting passed around. Put your name and your paper in alphabetically. Okay, what was the question? There was another question. I did 37. That was part of your handout, one of your handouts. I did that one. You should be able to do 38. This is required, 31 through 37. Well, 37 is already done in your notes. But do it again. Did you guys get 25? You should try 25. Now, just because we didn't assign a problem like 20 and 22 doesn't mean you don't know have to know how to do them. You do. And we may have a question on 23. The reason why I know there's a question here is because somebody came in and asked me. Now, I may homework quiz you on the book problem. The worksheet's easy for me to collect. Make sure it gets around. Make sure you turn in your worksheet no matter what, even if it does, the book doesn't get to you. If you substitute in zero, you get zero over zero. Oh, and by the way, um, this is pre-calc. So, yes, you did see the, the cubing last year. This is Mrs. Richmond's pre-calc classes. There it is. She's got it up on the board. Okay, I get zero over zero. And we can go back and do 23 if we need to. Okay, what can you do to this? I have to do a trick here. This is a hard problem. Well, what would you do here? Yeah. Now, you might have used your calculator. Okay, so in the denominator, subtracted out x, and some of you have some issues factoring out the x. What's left? 2x minus 1. So let's, no, the numerator is 0. Let's rewrite this so we can see it better. I can see it right away, but you might not. It's this. Now, this is arithmetic, you guys. It's multiplying fractions. Come see me if you are having troubles with that. This is how you multiply fractions. One times the sine of x, the sine of x. I'm just unmultiplying them, not dividing them. And then this is over x, and that's that. Now we can do this quickly. What is this one? One. Now what do you do? You put zero in here. So it's times one over zero minus one, or negative So you really might have had some troubles with these because we hadn't talked about this. It's not your fault. What about 23? Did you understand 23? Did you do 23? Did you get the right answer? Now, I don't have any answers in my book. Somebody took my book first year we got this book. 
But the answer to 23 is 12, correct? So I need to do that. Solutions are on, should be online. I'm not sure about this. This is the change the assignment. Did you guys get 27 okay? Uh, you know what? I've done all of these. 24, 26, 28. They're all done. How, and now we haven't done 22, but you should be able to do 22. Is it time to ask me questions or else we have time to work? No questions. I'm waiting. Yes. <laughs> Wait until we do 23. Okay, if you got 23, you have time to work. Yes. Which one do you have a question on? Okay, well, let me do one thing to one at a time. Question? What was the other one, 31? What's 31? Okay, greatest integer function. You're going to have to know that. And remember, if it's at, at the one-sided limit, so you're okay. Well, let's do this one. This is, she's got H, A plus B cubed. Oh, this is uh, not the one I have on this. Now, this is Pascal's triangle. It's 1, 3, 3, 1. And then it's A cubed. Then it's A squared, then it's A, and then A to the 0. I'm not going to write it. Then, except I don't need myself enough space here. Sorry. Sorry, that's A squared. Now, the Bs, this is B to the 0, so this is B to the 1st, this is B squared, and this is B cubed. And you just follow that little formula. So this is 2 plus X cubed. What's A equal to? Two, right? What's B equal to? X. Okay. So you're going to put two in there and there and over there. So you're going to get the limit. A and make sure, remember I said I promised things would cancel. It's two cubed plus, hey guys, three times two squared times B, but that's X. Plus three times two. B is X, that's X squared, plus X cubed, minus 8. What's 2 cubed? Whoops. Oh, no, I want that. 8. What happens to 8? I promise. If you didn't do it right, it doesn't cancel. But it always will if you do it right. So I'm now going to simplify that numerator because it's pretty ugly looking. Well, that's 3 times 4. That's 12X plus 6x squared plus x cubed divided by x. Now, you could factor an x out, or you could divide x into each term. I don't care. I prefer to divide x into each term. Because here they'll cancel. Here you'll be left with an x. Here you'll be left with an x squared. I'm showing you an alternate way to do that. No matter how you do it, you got to get this. Now, this is the calculus part. x is 0. So this is going to be 0, and this is going to be 12. Now, I did mine in my head. You can look at my book. I don't have any answers written in. I can build up a space there. I can look at my book. It's a big money. <laughs> it's just a trick. You'll learn the trick, yes. They, what happened to the 8? They canceled. Did you forget this 8 over here? Easy to do. Now, let's look at 31. 31 is the greatest integer. Do not assume that you don't need to do the homework. You've not done this stuff before. Just because you watch it in class doesn't mean you're going to be able to do it on a test. And if you can't do it in the homework, what makes you think you can do it on a test? You can't. <laughs> now, you have to read these carefully, unfortunately. Now, remember, tomorrow's Wednesday, so I'm not going to be here in the morning. I have a meeting. 
you could look at that graphically, but it's asking for what is the greatest integer function doing when you come in from the right. Okay, give me a number close to zero, okay, close to zero, but bigger than zero. Zero point zero 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 one, right? I want the greatest integer less than or equal to that. What's that value? Good. Don't make math hard. If it's non-calculator and you're doing a bunch of calculations, you've made it hard. Don't make it hard. If you are a non-calculator, you do not have a lot of calculations. Somebody on the exam last year did 16 to the fifth power. It actually is pretty close. I don't know if it's he or she. I can't remember my handwriting. But then recouped his error and went back to 16 to the fifth power and wrote it that way. It was fine. But if he had just left it, 16 multiplied out, I had to use my calculator. He was close, but he wasn't right. I would have had to take that point. So you can recoup your losses on that exam. If you make a mistake and you go, oh, I made a mistake, and you go back and fix it, you're fine. As long as it's clear that's what you've done. Are there other ones you want me to do? Because we still have a few minutes. Especially the end ones. And on the end ones, you need to show your work. On those multiple choice problems? No, there aren't. No, the more practice is all optional. Remember, half hour outside of class. I know you have a life. I try to have a life. I don't really get one, but... <laughs> And he didn't even assign those. Oh, 65 through 70. Oh, you, there's work to do on those. If you look up the answers in the back of the book and mark A, B, C, D with no work, I mark it wrong. Same on the exam, you guys. You guys. Same thing on the exam. If you don't show your work, if your slope is 3 minus 5 over 2 minus 8, and you just say it's negative 2 over negative 6, but you don't show this, it's wrong. <laughs> we have to see your thinking. Here's the key word, convinced. I'm convinced you might have gotten that from the back of the book or your neighbor. <laughs> so when you give me A, B, C, D, I'm not convinced that you knew what you were doing. I'm sure that there's work. Sometimes there is no work. I'll admit that. But that's rare. <laughs>